Hey, welcome back to our study in Titus, chapter 3, 12 through 15, called Devotion to Good Works. And today we're looking at the work of missions. And that's in uh, verses 12 through 13. So we're going to see some Paul talking about the missionary work that's going on in the church. And so the first thing he mentions is about uh, Artemis or uh, Tychicus. So it's interesting as we study these random mentions of different people in the letters and in the book of Acts, to, you know, we, we can take those two together and we can piece together how the church was functioning during this time. Now you had the apostles with their special office and spiritual gifts who were laying down the foundation of the church and its body of doctrine. You had the elders who were being appointed and establishing the churches in every town where there was a Christian presence, and they were there to lead and to govern. You also had many missionaries and scripture carriers that would travel about evangelizing, supporting the local churches, um, keeping the Christians connected across the Roman Empire. Now, two of these latter workers were Artemis and Tychicus. In the case of Artemis, this is the only mention of him in the Bible. There is mention of him in some extra-biblical writings that say that you know, he became an elder in a city. But it appears at the time of the writing of Titus, he was working with the Apostle Paul and traveling to help the, the growing churches um, throughout the empire. Now, Tychicus, on the other hand, we know more about. In Acts 24, we find Tychicus being mentioned along with other men who were companions of Paul. Both he and Trophimus were from Asia. In Ephesians 6, we find Paul telling the Ephesians that he had sent Tychicus to, to them. Paul describes him as the beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord. It's probably, well, it's probable that he is the one that carried the letter to the Ephesians. He was the guy who brought the letter from Paul uh, to their church. Now, Paul also tells Timothy in 2 Timothy that he had sent Tychicus to Ephesus. So you put that together, it makes like, okay, he probably was the one that carried the letter. And we also know that Tychicus was in Colossae because Paul says in Colossians 4, 7, As to all my affairs, Tychicus, our beloved brother and faithful servant and fellow bondservant in the Lord, will bring you information. So in all this, we get the sense that of what these men were doing in the church. They were traveling about supporting the apostles and the local churches. They were kind of the go-between. As the apostles were going about teaching and establishing churches in areas where the gospel had not gone, gone yet, um, and you have the ones that were established, but yet now you have elders, you have some of the these other co-workers of Paul going around, like Timothy and Titus, that were not really so much of an elder that was staying in place, but they would stay in a place for a while to help really grow that church, to make that church strong, and then, then, then they would move on, and they would find the elders, the men that were qualified to be elders, get them set up in the position uh, of authority there, and then they'd move on to the next place. Uh, where they were needed. So we see that over and over again. We see that here. So Artemis and Tychicus were very important to keep the apostles and the churches connected together while they were apart. Now, as I said, one of the important jobs or uh, of this traveling group of men was to support the apostles. Our friend Titus was one of them. He was in Crete to help find elders for the churches in each town and establish the sound doctrine on the island. After he finished his mission, Titus's work was not done yet. For some reason that we are not told, Paul wanted Titus to come join him in Nicopolis over the winter. Perhaps Titus had a certain spiritual gift or talent that Paul thought would be advantageous to the work at Nicopolis. Maybe they were following the same pattern that they had done in Crete when both Paul and Titus were at Crete, and then Paul left Titus there to continue on. Maybe that's why they were doing it. But no matter the reason, whenever either Artemis or Tychicus got to Crete, Titus was to do his best and make his way to Paul for the winter. Next we get a mention of two other guys, Zenos and Apollos. Both of them were either with Titus in Crete or were expected to be there at some point as the letter 
you know, made its way there. So first we have Zenos, the lawyer. Now tradition tells us that Zenos was a member of the 72 that Jesus sent out to heal the sick and declare that the kingdom of God was at hand, that it was near them. Now later on it said that he became an elder in the city of uh, Diospolis. Uh, now there is some debate whether he was a lawyer in the sense that the gospel writers use the word or in a secular sense. Now the gospel writers use the word lawyer in re reference to a Jewish scribe that was especially skilled in the Mosaic law, even beyond what was expected of a normal scribe. So they were very well acquainted with the law of God. And uh, all scribes were, but these people who were called lawyers were above and beyond. Now, the word was also used to describe a man that worked in the civil law system. So in the secular realm, these people were also called lawyers like we have today. So a man with either skill would be useful to the work of spreading the gospel. You can see how this was very important for the ministry of the church as it was just starting out. You know, if he was a scribe, as according to the, as according to the gospels, he would be adept at persuading the Jewish people in the fact that Jesus was the Messiah. So he had the, those skill sets. He had that knowledge of, um, you know, the Old Testament law. Could say, okay, here's who the Messiah was according to the Old Testament, and uh, here's Jesus. So he would be good at that. He would have that necessary skill set. Now, if he were a civil lawyer, though, then he would be invaluable resource as well, as the missionaries often found themselves in the civil courts. Right? They were often getting arrested, being pulled into. Uh, the Roman courts. And so we know that's important. Of course, we know Apollos, too, from our study of 1 Corinthians. If we look at 1 Corinthians, we know a lot about Apollos. He was a fellow worker and evangelist with Paul. Some people in Corinth preferred um, him over Paul, and that caused a division within the church. From the scriptures, we do not find that these men were ever at odds with each other. There's no talk of how one was jealous of the other. Paul doesn't make any any hint that that was the case. Um, you know, as Paul says, he planned, planted in Apollos water. So Paul was laying down the foundation of Jesus Christ, you know, sharing the gospel, and then Apollos would come along behind him and uh, teach more about the doctrines and what it means to be in the church and how to live the life um, that God has called us to as Christians. So you kind of see that uh, happening and um, you know they play different roles so there really couldn't be any competition really because they were doing two different jobs now concerning these two men Paul tells Titus to speed them along and to equip them with everything that they need for the journey one of the qualifications of the elders was to be hospitable and here Titus can be an example now many of our missionaries today could easily identify with the lifestyle of these men the traveling and having to learn many roles and change roles as need occurred. Most people crave stability and constancy and kind of any really kind of change throws them sometimes into hysterics. At least it really just puts them off. But we would do well to learn from these early Christians to hold everything with an open hand. Our God is always the same. The truth remains the same, but everything else changes. We need to be careful to not find our identity in this world. Our identity ought not to be based on our possessions, our relationships, our jobs, our roles in ministry. One of the greatest foolishness of our day is basing one's identity on gender or sexuality. You know how demeaning it is to humanity to lower oneself, one's identity to something creaturely. You know, our gender and sexuality belongs to mostly to our bodies. And so if we set our whole identity on that, it doesn't make any sense. We were just watching a commercial recently where the lady, or oh, it was a TV show, where a lady was talking about how she had these, you know, extended earlobes. She put the, the things in her ears to extend her earlobes, and that was part of her, that was her identity. Um, well, it got damaged, and so her identity was damaged. 
people. So to, uh, you can see how silly it is to put your identity in something so, especially in your body, because we know our bodies are going to die. So we put our identity in our body, well, then our identity is what, doomed to be thrown into the ground or to be burned? That's not what you want you to identify yourself with. It means it can easily be destroyed. And, uh, you know, if we're looking to do something worthwhile, important, putting your identity in something like your sexuality or gender is kind of foolish, too. Because And the, the same people that do that are the same people that change their sexual, sexuality and gen, gender all the time. And so it's like, well, then you're always changing your identity. Therefore, you don't know who you are. And therefore, you know, how do you how do you live your life then? If your identity is always something so so creaturely like i my identity is based on my you know big toe or something it doesn't make any sense so uh that's the study for today um thinking about missionaries you got these guys who are going out there their identity was in god and what christ uh had given to them and so their identity was based on something that was outside of themselves and was permanent that's where you want to put your identity so come back next time we'll talk a look take a look at um the work of supplying needs that's a good work that we need to do so come back next time we'll talk about that <laughs>